speaking voice Keep two meters apart, speaking voice Speaking voice Keep two meters apart, speaking voice Hello, oh, I haven't even moved over. Hello, everyone. Welcome to no, Answer Wrong. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our usual and coming back show, Speaking Moistly, with me as usual, Greg. How are you doing today, sir? It's it's going fantastic, Mark. We do it same show regularly every what is it two and a half months? Yeah, from what we feel like. It's it. a very yeah. yeah. The cadence is very uh, predictable ish. Keeps the audience guessing. I remember. I remember being a kid and we would try and like, like the raccoons or my pet monster. And you'd try and like find it. You'd try and be like, I'm going to watch this show again next week. And then you'd show up at like, you know, 630, whatever time it was. And you'd try and watch the show and it would never be on then. Do you remember going through this or is this just me in the 80s? Uh, I think I was just you in the 80s. <laughs> but, but there's nothing that is devastating as when you want to, you're ready to watch the new thing and it's not there. Yeah. That's, uh, it makes it all the more exciting when it actually is there. There you go. So one of the things that's happened since, I mean, how many assassination attempts since the last time we chatted? Was, has it been <laughs> one or two? <laughs> uh, I'm not I sure. I don't know if we talked before the first one. Yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't say that, like, I can't believe this happened because people were saying Tucker Carlson, two. Yeah, Brett like Weinstein. Two since we last chatted. Yeah, Brett Weinstein. They were all like, you know, they're going to try and kill Trump. It seems like really likely they're going to try and kill Trump. And by they... The same people who killed Kennedy. And by the same people who killed Kennedy. Well, you can extrapolate the rest. But right, people were warning about this. And then, you know, the first the first shooting where the Secret Service was completely inept. And then mm -hmm. right after that, when the news media completely plum forgot and said Trump fell on stage, there was something that happened at a Trump rally, but yeah. nothing really. How can you not be a massive conspiracy theorist at right. this point? Like it's it's just there's so much going on. Yeah, it's so interesting. you you read the newspaper and you think I'm I'm pretty well informed. You get to work and you're like, did you hear about the shooting? You're like, the shooting? Like what? I mean, I mean, I gotta say, even a lot of a lot of people in the right wing space right now. Oh, massive! You know, they're, they're talking about policy, policy, and like Kamala's lying, and it's like, yeah, but the way that he almost got killed, though, <laughs> I feel like we're not talking about that. Enough, even in, even during the debate. They didn't even bring like Trump said, I got shot in the head for the way you speak about me. And the moderator was like, oh, OK, hold on a second. Move on, move on, move on. Let's talk about how they're not eating pets. Like, yeah. And I, it goes without saying, and I feel like a lot of right wing people have been so beaten into the ground by the slanted tables, by the, the loaded deck, by the way that it's always so biased. But the double standard is totally crazy. Because you know if it would, this happened to a leftist politician, it would be like, okay, let's round up the right-wingers. Already. Let's round them all up now. There, there is that situation. Violent. Elon Musk put out a tweet and said, um, like he was responding to, this is the second assassination attempt for Donald Trump, blah, blah, blah. You know, it was like something. And Elon Musk was like, and, they, and he, nobody's tried to kill Kamala yet. You know, like, I can't believe, like, oh my gosh, right? <laughs> and, the, and the people are losing their mind. Like the, the, all the people that you would expect who are losing their minds, they're like, I can't believe Elon Musk. Like we have to take Twitter away from him now because uh, look at what he just said on Twitter. Like <laughs> they're yeah. making all sorts of nonsense excuses. So with that in mind, like if they can bury multiple assassination attempts of a, of a former and pending US president, they can do anything. And remember that, and, Chinese, and they will do anything. And they will. Oh, man, right? they will. They'll, like it they kind will. of shows that their, their ironclad will, I don't know what you would call it, but... Uh, yeah, well, the, to, to, push, to, to push their ideology forward. But have you heard of, and I know this was a little while ago, but Chinese infiltration into our House of Commons in Canada, not the US, but Canada this time. Heard of that? I, I did hear about Fair that. Enough. It was so bad that even an official government entity... They had to do two. They had to do two because the first one had been putting out... Uh, like Johnston was opening Confucius centers in Waterloo, in the University of Waterloo. And then the University of Waterloo bust Chinese students to a friendly liberal riding to make sure their preferred candidate, Han Dong, got that liberal seat. So Han Dong's probably one of them, of the 11, but we'd like the other names. And if you think there are less than, or if you think that the 11 people is it, that's the corruption, right? Like, oh man, like your, your hand's gangrenous, but you know, the rest of everything's just fine. You know, chop that hand off and it's fine. I don't think so, right? Like I think the whole yeah. House of Commons is pretty um, riddled with whatever, but Hogue, 
yet this morning or yesterday said I'm not gonna we're not gonna tell anybody who the traders are. Nobody. Nobody gets to know. Who am I gonna tell you not guys? even not even the traders who themselves. The traders we couldn't today. we couldn't be assured. Uh, we don't know. Who knows, right? Yeah. And so she's saying like we're not we're not gonna tell anybody. And I feel like I don't know how you can go into an and I've been saying this on my show for a while. So I don't know how you can go into an election knowing for that we've had tr Chinese traders for over a year in the House of Commons. Those people are trying to pass censorship bills, and now we have to go into an election with them protected. Who does this system work for? Forget that. I don't know how we can go into an election. How can we look at ourselves in the mirror and say, "I am a Canadian," and 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 you know, I seriously say that to yourself? Right. And, I don't know that you're allowed feel... to say that anymore. Well, not if you're like, white. No. Well, uh, I mean, but even like transcending uh, that, like the the country, and I mean, we've had. I've, I've, I have a friend, um, and he's been a good friend of mine for a long time. His name is Haren. Um, and like, I don't talk with him very much anymore, but like, he's not white and he is Canadian, right? But, and, and like, we, we got into this the other week, right? I, but, but, but still, like, I don't want to, I don't want to break it. It's not just race. This is happening everywhere. It's like here, this is, remember when COVID happened mm -hmm. and in Australia they were doing rubber bullets and one kind of lockdown and in Canada they were doing a different kind of lockdown they were using sure. RCMP to do enforcement and o OPP mm -hmm. and Australian it rhymes mm -hmm. but it's different so like the invasion of all of these countries part of that is fostering uh, conflict between the races so you've and I mean you can do it with religions too like if you have competing mm -hmm. religions if mm -hmm. if if both religions are very uh what's the word uh, str strong is not the right word, but like if both religions are are very established, right? Mm -hmm. Then then they can either hit an equilibrium or they they fight. But if 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 you've got Islam coming in and Christianity uh, being kind of on the way out, like being sunsetted on purpose in our society, by the way, then like Christianity is going to submit and Islam is going to take it over. It's not going to be like atheism rises because atheism doesn't take up that space. You know what I'm saying? So what the point I'm making, and th there's a lot of people talking about the racist, the, the race side of this, the conflict side of this, all of the rest of it. I don't want to talk about that because I don't know that that's a, f a fruitful conversation. I want to talk about the, the flooding of the country, the purposeful conflict uh, encouragement, right? I want to examine that kind of stuff from, a new, from like a solutions point of view. Does that make sense? I mean, it does. It does. Like you know, like we're we're seeing the uh, multicultural reality, the sobering reality of multiculturalism. And guess what? You you kind of get tribalism. And uh, right. I, I I I hear where you're coming from, and to an extent, I agree. We I agree. We need to you know make sure we don't get up in the in 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 the whole divide and conquer game. However, at the same time, you know, Mark, when you look around you see different tribes warring for what different tribes want and the the people the tribes that band together and collectivize and sure. present themselves to a politician to say like hey yeah we're a tribe and this is what we want, what we want. so but like all you have is bending over backwards for these tribes he's reacting to it he's well responding. he's pandering he's pandering to it right but, but, but how what do you is one, what is the one tribe that is like uniquely dismissed downplayed denigrated ignored it's the but, old stock Canadian tribe. Oh, sure, sure, they sure. Get treated, they get treated like crap. And uh, but, I don't know. It's, but it's, it's not just it's but, not just happening in Canada, though. It's happening in the United sure. Kingdom. And the whole reason sure. for that is to... And what do they all have in common? No, no, but, but the whole reason is because you can't... Is because you can't bring about a communist revolution in a functioning society. You can't, in a functioning, prosperous society, not enough people say, down with the system, we hate, we need revolution. So sure. in order to bring that about, they have to destroy it. And we're, we're under attack with multiple vectors. And I've talked about this on my show before, like the thing that, that is being sold to move to the West, be it Australia, be it Canada, be it the United Kingdom, be it anywhere that's being, that's a target for mass migration. All of the people coming to those places are being sold a better life. 
right? And I think they're victims because they get here. I read a report yesterday, not a report, but somebody somebody said, uh, I work with a Nigerian and him and his wife came here for a better life for their kids. And he realized that it costs so much more money. Like, sure, you make a lot of money. It looks like on paper, you're going to be super rich, right? But when you get here and you find out that, oh, holy crap, it's actually, that's just enough for rent. Like they wanted to go back to their country, but they'd spent their life savings. So they're trapped. They're victims just like, and, and they're victims in another way, but just like, Canadians are being victimized by the government and and whoever's bankrolling this whole thing and like so how do I we mean, how do we reframe how do we get the the bank of I people think, I think we do a reverse uno card and we all just mass migrate us white Canadians mass migrate to Delhi India and then we demand to be called Indian citizens we you know we protest in India but this is not like but this isn't productive it's not productive though like this is this is not a product like you know what I'm saying like I don't know that, that that's not a solution you know what I mean like going you don't think that would work no it's not a solution and it's like it's not it's not something that is because it's not really addressing the problem the problem is We've got people like Hogue in a situation where we know that there's criminality going on. We know that because CSIS has leaked a whole bunch of criminality saying like, there's a whole bunch of Chinese people who are in our government, who are influencing our government, Chinese communists influencing our mm -hmm. government. That's bad. We know that, right? And so like mm -hmm. those people in charge are using every trick in the book to water down our Senate to water down our legal infrastructure, to water down our protections under our Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And this isn't just happening in Canada, it's happening in the United Kingdom too. They're throwing people in but jail. Just to, be just to play devil's advocate, do you think the Chinese Canadians, because I know we're, like, we're bringing up race in this context, sure. do you think the Chinese Canadians are gonna care if there's like Chinese infiltration? Or do you think a, the a Indian lot of them Canadians do. are gonna care if there's infiltration from the nation of India, like, do you think they're going to be making a big stink about how there's you, traitors in our parliament? Yeah. Okay. So, like, uh, people that I've seen, and this is more, and, and this I know is more Trump. Going to be an exception that, yeah. Of this is more. Will care. This is more Trump related. Well, hold on. Let me let me make because you asked okay. the question. This is more Trump related, but you said, well, Chinese people care, and the Chinese. So there was a Laura Loomer or one of those type people we're talking about. She no, it wasn't Loomer. It was a Chinese. It was a Chinese broadcaster, and she was down in like sure South states, I think California, but wherever. And she said, do you support Trump? Do you support Trump? Do you support Trump? And this Chinese guy was like, I'm from China. And she said, I'm also from China. And he was like, well, you have to be Chinese to understand why, but I support Trump because he's trying to fight the communists. The mm -hmm. communists are, 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 what they're doing right now here is the same thing that they did in China with the Great Leap yeah. Forward. I do, I support Trump. I don't support this communist bullshit. So like on one side, and like when you bring up the Chinese, the, the Indian migrants are getting like, beat up crazy and i mean very very figuratively beat up um because it's very high profile the the beach pooping the uh, students like the the uh, foreign yeah, students they're, they're going viral but, every week so, they're finding something well yeah. right but like there that's a very big kind of like that's a very very high profile situation that's going on so sure, that's sure. so that's a lightning rod for a lot of the the um let's let's make them fight you know what i mean like i often talk mm -hmm. about the person that shakes the jar of red ants and black ants it's like hey man you made that guy shake the jar right and instead of fighting mm -hmm. the guy shaking the jar they fight each other and, I, and i'm saying that we're having the jar shaken and we're fighting the ants and we're not actually going after the problem and we, we should try and go after the problem because it seems like even in the government we're not allowed to talk about like the real problem the, the real problem according to hogue and according to the apparatus of our government is mischief tamara lich's mischief chris barber's mischief the coots guy's mischief mm -hmm. that's the mm -hmm. thing that they need to worry about not chinese interference not censorship bills not stacking the senate not any of these things that like people who are actually paying attention are looking at and i think that when we talk about race we go off on race in in the direction of like you know let's hate on these people and let's make jokes about it because like ultimately we're trying to be funny no 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 no, no no but we are we are funny and it is funny like to make jokes and laugh about it, it is funny that's kind of what we do but like if we go off in that direction we're not we're not keeping and we're not helping ourselves i think ultimately so i you know uh, on one hand i don't disagree with you on the other hand the more i look at every single issue that's affecting canada and canadians I feel like there is a a, st a deep sort of spiritual disease that Canadians have. Oh sure, that we, but I, that we that we don't advocate for our own side. Yes, you know. I didn't answer the Indians. Uh, part too. And and I think that more and more we're going to be waking up to the fact that there is a racial reality to that. And I know that yeah. sounds icky. That sounds uncomfortable. But you know, let's let's talk about it. Let's say there's there's a, a tribe. Let's say it's like back in Canada. 
be- before there was any white people here for sake of argument and there's five different tribes okay and each different each, each different tribe has a different uh tribal parliament all right but and and then one day you know one of the people from one tribe blue tribe goes into red tribe and infiltrates that parliament there's a traitor in our parliament it's very clear who the traitor is there's someone from the other tribe right now in our parliament we have a bunch of different tribes from a different a bunch of different people from different countries so it's like it becomes a little bit unclear of like oh like who who the who the traitor is why they are a traitor because we live in a post national state right yeah. it's like well well what's good for india is good for canada what's good for china is good for like like we have been we have been so infected with with this sort of insidious uh, mentality of being a post national state that how can we meaningfully as canadians call out uh, traders, if if we're not even going to like honor who we are as a country, you know what I mean? Like the, like the multi at the, end of the, at the end of the day, our problems are really resulting are happening because we are so demoralized and we don't care. A great example is sure, I agree where, like what what I wanted to bring up right away is when you brought up the trader thing is how so few people care and how if we, if we are, were in the yeah, states that's demoralized, yeah, yeah, if yeah. we were in the states. There'd probably be way more Americans who are like, there's a traitor. Like, that's unacceptable. And more people would rise up and they would do something about it because there is some sort of stronger sense of nationalism, sense of shared identity. And I'm just saying, like, r- race is obviously one element in which you can build up an identity mm-hmm. of uh, how you identify yourself. And that's kind of why I was bringing that up because, uh, you know, looking at yourself in the mirror, being like, I am Canadian. Like, what does that even, what does that even mean anymore? And, uh, why isn't why isn't there more of like a you know blood pumping sort of anger that Canadians collectively have about traitors being in our parliament? Right, and I, I yeah. agree with you for for a lot of what you said. Um, there's there's aspects of it. One of the things that I was going to say is you were talking about tribes in parliament, and you know what's good for India is, is good for Canada, and so on and so forth. And how how can you how can you discern that? I don't think that that's India's fault. I don't think that's people who are migrating here for a better life. I don't think that that's their fault. You know what I'm saying? Like the problems that we have at the at the leadership level where you're seeing groups form, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I don't know that that that, that is w- the implication that you were kind of making is that those people may or may not be working for Canada's best interests, so on and so forth. There, there could be a question, right? And like, if there is a question, I'm more talking about the Chinese traders that cease. And I mean, we can't get to the bottom of it, so there's nothing but speculation. But that, what people do in leadership in in a situation where there's potentially incentive for places like China and India to infiltrate our our parliament and then have their agents uh, behave in, you know, nefarious ways, that level of uh, statecraft is not the fault of the rank and file everyday person, right? Does that make sense? But then you yeah, get situation. Okay. Then you get situations though, where we have people who are being brought from the Middle East who are sexually assaulting girls in pools, and that's I think the leadership's fault because they're sitting, they're they're setting the the stage to bring these people in who don't know our culture or who are purposely attacking us and pretending, uh, covering the attack by saying they don't know the culture. You know what I mean? Um, and and then just to add one aspect, because you said, uh, you know, would Chinese people care? And I said that I think that they would, and I gave an example. And then you said, would Indian people care? And I'll, I'll give you another example. So the Khalistani thing. Is, is, is this the exception though? Maybe, but you make the, I, I don't know. I'll, 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 I'll make my case and then you can tell me sure, if it's an exception sure. or not. The Khalistani thing. I don't think that that group of people represents a large group of, um, so when I talk about the rank and file your your regular everyday person. I'm talking sure. about, you know, a person who's in India and they see an opportunity and they think to themselves, I could I could make my life better. They're not coming to 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 Canada in order to join the Khalistani movement. They're not coming to Canada to uh, swell numbers of the Khalistani movement. You know what I mean? They're right. not coming here for alternate purposes. They are only coming here because they think, "Hey man, like it really looks like I could I could make a go of things there and there's opportunities and like I'm going to do it." So that's that's kind of the distinction that I'm talking about. Like the regular everyday people aren't responsible necessarily for the actions of extremists like the Calistani Calistani group. And are there people who will take advantage of the loopholes in our immigration to come here for terrorist reasons or to bolster that group? 
Yes, yes, there are. And then will that group gain power? Yeah, like that's that's happening. And so like we need, and Canada had a really, I mean, had a good, so up until the 90s, like, but again, multiculturalism in 1987 was passed by Brian Mulroney, but this was another globalist thing. It was setting the stage for the flooding of our country now in order to do exactly what they're doing. So it was, it's always been a plot. It's always been a nefarious evil thing, but that's at the level of this statecraft and it's not the individual people's fault. And that that's a big distinction that is lost within the, within the conflict that's being fostered. Does that make sense? I mean, it makes sense, but not to, not to sound uh, like an, like a butthole here, but like, I don't, I don't really, I don't really care. I don't really care, you know. But the like, distinction—it's it's, important. It's, no, I know, but it's important. No, no, but listen, what I care about is the fact that y you are. A, let's say you're a Sikh who lives in Canada. Let's say you are a Muslim who lives in Canada. Let's say you're a Jew that lives in Canada. The, it's it, these people, these groups get a lot of leeway and a lot of even encouragement to think of themselves as a group to advocate for themselves. Look as at a group. Quebec. Even even right now. We are being sensitive to the fact that we don't want to offend this group. And it's like, Mark, what about what about our group? No, no, I know, but the, but the thing is, saying? okay, like exactly but we're at this point now. Like we can't unring bells that have been rung. And like unless unless you have a big war. No, really. Like we're in a situation where the a lot of the rank and file population and and like uh, what's his name? Gad Sad says it's uh, suicidal empathy, which I think is probably very a an accurate term. I'm not saying that I support people doing this, but I'm recognizing that this is where we are. You know what I'm saying? Like, sure. have you seen American History X? Uh, yeah. Okay. So when most people think of like white I people, white people grouping okay. up, right? That's what they think about, right? Like that's, yep. that's, that's mm -hmm. exactly their go-to, right? Uh, what's his name? Mm -hmm. no, Norton? No, Ed Norton. Edward Ed Norton, Norton, yeah. Ed Norton and the curb stomp, right? And the jail sentence yep. and the you know sure. the tatted up Nazis, all of that yeah. stuff. That's where people go. And like, what I'm trying to say is that's part of fostering the conflict. And we need to find a way to tap dance around that and not get caught up in the conflict and have a solution that that is able to take into effect or take into account the criminality that we're seeing, take into account the the terrorist people who are who are doing the Black Lives Matter, the now Palestine, the sure, rail sure. blockades. You take these people out. Like these people are being paid by our tax dollars to to disrupt our society. And it's been years, years. Mm -hmm. And truckers go to Ottawa with flags and peace and they get labeled as terrorists so like we're being distracted by the racism argument to not solve the problem and we have to solve the problem right and the problem is the guy shaking the jar not the red ants that's my that's like the point that's what it is and like if i was making this i was making this argument on my show the other day as well if there was like a tomahawk missile blowing up buildings in toronto people would be like this is intolerable people are dying people are being harmed there's no buildings to live in people don't feel safe right but because it's people because it's human beings that are taking up those buildings now that building is a million dollar liability rather than an asset to the city of toronto it's a liability it's full of migrants it's full of people the government has to spend tax dollars to make it up and they're changing the culture in the neighborhood that is a weapon we are being attacked just like bombs going off right and i don't i don't think that that should we shouldn't tolerate that but we're being distracted by fighting amongst people rather than about race rather than taking out the idiots in the Congress, in, in the House of Commons, who refuse to be held accountable. And that's all that's happening. We're saying, we'd like to hold you accountable now. And they're saying, well, we found this judge to say not today. So not today. And we're all going, oh, I can't believe they got away with it again. We'll get them next time, right, Pierre? Right? And I'm just so sick of it. I'm like, we're doing all the wrong things. All the, we're running headlong into all the wrong things. And all it does is gets people's back up and their hackles up and like they get defensive and nobody's fighting together. Everybody's fighting completely unorganized. They're organized. They're trying to flood our country, start a war and exterminate us. And we're going, mm -hmm. holy cow, have you noticed there's a lot of Indians in Walmart? It's like, fuck, dude, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like we're missing the forest from the trees while they hack our head off. It's crazy. It's crazy. So I wish it yeah. weren't so. I just wish we weren't so stupid.
Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, I'm, I wouldn't say that I, I'm like hung up on race or anything. I just kind of brought up a comment of, uh, you know, especially feeling confused of who you are when you, if you're, uh, you know, if you're a so-called white Canadian. No, but, I know, um, but it seems, sorry, sorry, finish off your thought. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I, I don't know. I, I just, uh, I, I think it's something that's, it, it is, I think the reason why I think it's worth mentioning is because it's, uh, it, it is going to be a continued sort of reality that, uh, you know, an ugly reality that we kind of have to, uh, have to look at because, um, I, like, we want to solve the problem, right? We want to solve the problem. And, and I think that accepting that we're a post national state, uh, is not going to, it's not like the energy that's going to like accept accepting all, all, all that's happened and trying to oh, constantly walking on eggshells to try to not offend other groups. No, no, I don't think we should I do think that. that. I think that's kind of, I don't think we should do Pierre that. But I, is doing, and I don't think that's, uh, yeah. I don't think that's actually going to solve the root of the problem. I think it's going to make it feel like we're solving the root of the problem. Maybe like maybe slightly like minimizing yeah. what's going on. But there, um, was, there was a time where race really like was a very secondary consideration in Canada. And maybe I was naive, like it's possible that I was naive, but like mm -hmm. the early 2000s, I went to college with a whole bunch of very, you know, different looking people. Uh, Post-college, I worked with a bunch of very, you know, different looking than me, but like whatever, yep. right? And like, again, I, ne I never thought to myself, we're being invaded. You know, like I never thought that, even sure. though like going to uh, a college, you would see quite a lot of examples of a lot of different diverse people. Some people wearing uh, head dressing. My grandmother wore a head, a head scarf for most of the days that I saw her sure, and, and not sure. yeah. for any other reason than she liked it. <laughs> I don't think there was a religious mm -hmm. reason, um, but yeah. right. So like there from, from that to uh, a very, you know, dark, um, like dark skinned African people all studying whatever they're interested in studying. And I thought this is great. Like I didn't. I didn't see, I didn't perceive any kind of danger, right? Because mm -hmm. the underlying culture of, of the place we lived, it seemed like we all agreed. There wasn't, there weren't these existential questions of, do we have freedom of speech? Do we have freedom of expression? Do we have uh, the right to post something on Facebook that's a little off color, but hilarious? You know what I mean? Like, can we do that? Mm -hmm. or are we going to get arrested? And like, you knew kind of where the line was then. And I mean, maybe people crossed it, but nobody was being arrested for that. And it was not something that, anybody really dwelled on i don't think and then now in this in this environment that we're in it's a very different phase and like i don't know if they were seeding the ground then or if it was just you know a live and let live phase and now we're being again um not conditioned to war but encouraged to have this conflict right well it's going to be tough too because as, as the quality of life kind of starts to continues to circle the drain mm -hmm. people are it's going to be more of a case of survival and when when things get survival mode, people get more tribal, yep. and uh, that's just the way that human beings work. Do you want to talk uh, about the what's going on in Ohio in Springfield? Like talking about survival, talking about you know they're eating the dogs, they're eating the cats, they're <laughs> eating dogs. It's wonderful. I mean, yeah, sure. Like uh, I don't have too much time because like my kids are gonna be home in like ten minutes, but we can we can do something like that, right? We can talk about it. Well, Maybe. I mean, yeah, I I, I think I. People who look look different from one another can sometimes act totally different from one another based on where they come from, and I think that the kind of mainstream conservative brand, Republican brand, doesn't want to address that or come out and say that. You know, it's just like, oh, it's just different ideas, and you know, you can do whatever you want when you well, you, apparently you from Haiti, you can, you know, you can no. come and so in the Haiti, American dream. in Haiti, in, well, yeah, love the American dream. They're using the the Haitians are being used as weapons. Like I said, it's it rhymes. It's different, but it rhymes, right? Like it's the, a sure. different way to get to the same result. But the the people from Haiti coming in, in Haiti, number one, Haiti and Dominican Republic are a single island, like they're a single land mass, right? Okay. And there's a big yeah. there's a border wall in the Dominican Republic that's patrolled with drones to make sure the people from Haiti don't come into sure. the Dominican Republic because they're different, yeah. right? Uh, Dominican Republic is uh, French, like uh, I think a French yeah. colony. Everybody sure. Okay. So um, Haiti, they speak French too. But anyway, regardless, um, Haiti, they have voodoo and the cats. But in Haiti, they passed a law that says you can't do that. So they, mm. they, they know that their population is starving and desperate. And they're mm. like, listen, stop eating the cats. Like you can't do that. This is a law. If we find you eating the cats, so they come to the United States to live the American dream and eat the cats. It's weird. 
right? And like, it's desperate. It seems desperate. Like it's it's a, a situation where it's drastically. There, I was going to say the parallel with Canada is the Khalistani movement as well, because the India in, the government in India cracks down on these extremists a lot. Whereas in Canada, the Khalistani are allowed to who are they can be as radical as they want here, and then no, nobody uh, nobody seems to care. I've seen yeah. There's um, Mocha. Do you know who Mocha is? Mocha B. Of course. Yeah, he's yeah, he's I love Bezergan. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm bad with names, so sorry about that. Um, but yeah, right. Mocha B. And man, like some of the stuff that he's put out is just shocking. And like, I mean, the mm -hmm. mayor of Calgary, uh, Sochi. Yeah. Um, or no, yeah. not at Edmonton, Sochi and Gondik. They're both. Yeah. They're, they're both like neck deep and in, in involved in this stuff. There's Kick back like there's kickbacks to family members not to mention the trucking industry being so like there are it's huge deep, huge deep. issues how do you it's deep. so what somebody was talking about mafia who was talking about mafia so like uh, i can't remember it was like a it was a big conversation there was like two people well-known people talking about this and he was saying the um, italian mafia how many movies about the italian mafia everybody knows about the italian mafia and the italian mm -hmm. mafia uses blood to tie them together family right and so mm -hmm like that's a control mechanism because like if we're brothers and you get arrested i know you're not going to roll on me because if you roll on me like you're mm -hmm. done you're yeah. done right and i'm gonna know and like for the jewish mafia in this example he said how many movies about the jewish mafia and like the other person was like well there's no jewish mafia movies right he's like yeah well, i wonder oh it's ian carroll and uh ian mm. carroll and that other guy and right. uh, so they were going back and forth and he was talking about how there's no movies about the jewish mafia because the jewish mafia doesn't use family they use their religion to tie them together and like i think there's mm. a weird kind of um cross section of that happening in the trucking industry and and, and like in politics in the west the world speak organization yeah well and it, like yeah again if you're interested in in finding out about that very very interesting rabbit hole look up mocha what's his name mocha Bezergan. Yeah, on, on -E -Z -I -G. X. G. And you you will be shocked. And it has nothing to do with being uh, Indian one way or the other, or, or Sikh one way or the other. They've like they've corrupted these organizations, and they're using them to move their power forward. And it's it's mind blowing. And nobody, Greg's exactly right. Nobody's doing a damn thing to stop them. Not one person. Nobody's doing. Any, Mocha, Mocha's standing there. He's like not on my watch. And in yep. India, An independent journalist from Turkey, buddy, on it. right? It's crazy. And and um, India banned a bunch of his tweets. India was like, nope. And I was like, what is happening? Yep. This is crazy. They also steal his content. Too. Yeah, a lot of uh, Indian news outlets. Yeah. So anyway, um, I got to go uh, because I've got to go. My kids are getting home. I can hear them walking up. So this was a wonderful chat. I, I hope um, I hope you enjoyed watching. Greg, thanks for coming and, and chatting with me today. It's been fun, and I hope we can do this more often because um, it's good to like chat. It's good to chat and get different perspectives and I don't know. I think so. Anyway, anything you want to say before we go? Yeah, we are funding a documentary to save free speech and call out the far left ideologues in Canada. And if you want to support that, go to givesengo.com slash save free speech. I also released a, a banger video today that talks about uh, everyone who stands up, all the parents who stand up to sexual or uh, gender ideology in schools uh, get systemically attacked. Uh, so you can check that out on my social media. It's called the uh, Canada's Hidden War on Parents. Hmm. So, uh, yeah. There's a lot of problems in the country, but we keep getting distracted and not f not actually dealing with the problems and instead arguing about the distraction until another problem makes itself evident. And then we get distracted and argue about that distraction until the next problem distracts us again. Yeah. And and, and part of uh, remedying that problem is is this organization, safefreespeech.ca, where I focus on one one topic and bang the drum. Yep. That's what the documentary is for. But cool. um, yeah, thanks for having me. Cheers, man. All right. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, we'll catch you next time.